guys, welcome back to the homestead. We are gonna continue on with our wine cellar, root cellar build. As you can see, we've done some more digging and he has got the footers dug out and we're gonna pour concrete in, in those uh, sometime soon. Now, originally what I wanted to do was pour a concrete pad on this, uh, but doing more research, I realized that you actually get more humidity, better humidity, um, if you leave like a ground floor, uh, gravel, something else that's porous that allows uh, the air and the temperatures to move a lot better. It's actually better for your vegetables and better for your food preservation, better for wine keeping. And so we're gonna go ahead and leave the floor without a pad and pour footers instead to which to build the bricks on. This is gonna be a brick uh, structure, uh, cinder block structure, and you'll see how we're gonna do that as we go on. Anyway, but we are continuing on. It's getting done. Uh, we're gonna bring a cement mixer in here and he's gonna go ahead and pour the footers and uh, we're gonna continue to build this thing. Now the hole he dug all the way to the back is definitely over my head and it leaves us with a huge amount of dirt piles that we have on either side. And once this is all done, all of this dirt is gonna be piled up back on top uh, to give that insulation, uh, to give that cellar look that we had in that picture that I showed you before. And so also uh, we're thinking about rain runoff. Uh, where's that water gonna go? We don't want it to pool up inside, so we're gonna be putting in some drainage and we're gonna be mounting the dirt in such a way that runs the water off and away. Now, just over to my left over here, your right, I have a well house uh, from an old 19th century well that's still in the ground, still has water in it. And whenever it rains, the water runs off into that well and then drains off the well and then goes into a pond that's just nearby. And so from there, it goes on down the mountain. So that's a great way right here to divert that water into that near that well and then to, to that pond and then off the mountain. So you gotta be thinking about all these things ahead of time before you do them. I think that gives us a great, you know, some great options to divert water. So to make, to make sure I don't want it going right to where the house is. Um, so we're gonna have it go that way and uh, get rid of all that moisture. Right there above that mound, you can see our smokehouse. That's the top of our smokehouse. And a lot of you guys have been asking about uh, smoke salt and say, Zach, there's no smoke salt in the store that's all sold out. When are you gonna have smoke salt again? Uh, we are gonna do that this winter. I have to repair some of the piping uh, for the ground, piping for the smokehouse, and uh, it collapsed. It needs to be redone. So we got that over there. We're gonna put that in at some point soon, and so you guys will be able to buy smoke salt again. Uh, if you've never tried smoked salt, it is so good. <laughs> so it will be back again, I promise. <laughs> I think it's often overlooked that most people in the cities even used to have root cellars, wine cellars. Uh, see, before the invent invention of refrigeration, something that we all today take completely for granted, uh, you had to find a way to preserve food even in the cities, and so people would do that. They would go to the marketplace, uh, they would buy uh, produce, whatever, you know, meats even, uh, cured meats, things like that, and they wanted someplace cool and with the right humidity to store those things. Cured meats store best with good humidity and coolness. And so uh, a cured meat can last a long time in a cool, humid environment, like a ground cellar. And so, if you have that, you know, even in the city, it's not something that's just limited to rural America or rural anywhere. Uh, even in Europe, uh, we, there's still ancient wine cellars or root cellars that uh, you can go and visit today. After the invention of the refrigerator in the 20th century, that stuff just went away. Uh, anywhere in the world where people had root cellars, wine cellars, they didn't need them anymore. And so they, they were sealed up. And in fact, sometimes you hear about amazing stories where uh, an old house uh, in the basement, uh, they dig into what's a false wall and they find an old ancient root cellar or wine cellar and they find sometimes amazing artifacts, sometimes very old bottles of wine or just different things. And so uh, these things were sealed up, they were taken out, never to be used again. Um, so, but rural America, most of these places, a lot of these farms in my area here, you can look and see these root cellars scattered over the countryside. People just didn't take them out, they're still there, or sometimes they're still being used. Um, and for homesteaders who are getting back to the off-grid living lifestyle, we're building them again, because we see the value in them. Uh, if we're trying to disconnect ourselves from electricity, from having some of those things, a root cellar, a wine cellar comes in really super handy. 
Well, we got our footers poured, and because of a miscommunication mishap, I missed out on the actual pouring. Uh, I was in town, had to do some errands, and I thought that they were coming today. And so by the time I got back from town, they were already finished. So today is the next day, uh, and but I have something else I want to show you. My youngest son has something, and so we'll look at that now. I think you're going to enjoy that. So my youngest son, Caleb, over the last week or so has been building out a bug out bag, and he knows we've had bug out bags here in the past, and he wanted one of his own. And so that's what he's got on here. So I think we're gonna take a look inside and see what we have. But there's one thing inside in particular that grandpa made for him that I wanted to kind of show off. It looks really neat. So let's take a look at inside Caleb's bug out bag. All right, so what do we have inside here? Uh, this, what is this? You have a blanket? Yeah, a blanket. You have some carabiners, right? You have some 550 cord. And this is a little tiny backpack here. Let's open this up. What do you got in here? First aid kit. First aid kit. It's always important for a bug out bag. Definitely important. Um, probably got some bandages and some... Yeah, there's 86 items. 86 items inside this first aid kit. Yeah. Yeah, wow, that's pretty cool. It was cool. only $10. Only $10? You bought this? Yeah. Oh, wow. You bought this with your own money? Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay, and then uh, what's this? Uh, that's just a bag. A bag for carrying some extra things? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, what is... Well, in case I find any like items, like any like food on the ground, like stuff like that. Oh, okay. Food on the ground. Or, like, food like on the ground plants everywhere. Plants or... Yeah. Plants or stuff well, like that. Well, actually, what I want... You have some really interesting things in here, but what I really want to concentrate on is this thing here. So it's, it's, let's tell everybody what we have here. What is this called? A hobo hand line. A hobo hand line. And uh, what, what does it do? What does a hobo hand line do? Uh, it basically, it you can cast it with your finger and the line is on your finger. So then you can um, catch fishes, fish, fish with it, and you can, um, well you can take So basically off, it's a fishing pole, right? Yeah. It's a fishing rod. And you can take off this string for extra string. And this is hollow, so you can take out the cork and there's baits and hooks in there. Really? That's nice. So. It's got a little cork here, and you put the cork in, and that's where inside here is where you keep all of your, your casting uh, lures and stuff like that. And then you have this uh, fishing line that's wrapped here, and you can throw it out there, and then you can kind of feel, they say you can feel the fish when it bites by keeping your finger on the line, you can feel the tug. But it's called a hobo hand line, and it's just a basic simple, set, uh, simple uh, fishing setup. That's all it is. And it's very effective. You can find lots of these online. You can buy them already pre-made. But this one was made by Grandpa for Caleb. And I think he made this out of uh, some, uh, basically a vine, a uh, muscadine grape vine. And then hollowed it out to put inside the fishing lures. Actually, we, we got the, the, the thing right over there. We got the um, vine right over there. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, it's, we have vines growing everywhere. We have lots of muscadine vines growing everywhere. But let me give you a close-up. So here it is right here. You can see it. you got the fishing line. And you've got, uh, this is the handle with some extra twine line on it right okay, there. It. And um, inside here is where the cork is. And you can, it's, you can see it's hollowed out. And there's all your lures inside. But yeah, pretty neat. Pretty neat. And just put the cork back on. It's got the K for Caleb. Pretty cool. The hobo hand line. Handmade. Pretty excited about that. So some of the other things he has in his bug out bag, uh, just a knife, uh, some extra 550 cord, uh, trash bag, change of clothes, and just some simple items like that. As he grows a little bigger, we'll outfit him with a bigger bag and uh, get some other materials in here. I told him that uh, if he reads, is it five books? Yeah, five books. Five books, I'm gonna buy him a canteen cup that he can use in his bug out bag. And when I was in the military, we didn't go anywhere without our canteen cups because you could do everything with those things. And so a steel canteen cup is one thing that I would not go anywhere without in my bug out bag. So we'll get him, we'll get him outfitted with one of those. So anyway, all right, stay tuned. We're gonna come back in a future video and talk more about our wine cellar root cellar. Uh, we're in the middle of this build and I don't want you to miss a thing even though we did miss the pouring, but the footers are now done. And so we're going to start laying block here soon, and we'll just keep you informed every step of the way. All right, guys. See you next time in the homestead. Bye.
Hey guys, we know that a lot of our audience are homeschoolers. Homeschooling here is very important to us. Uh, and if you're like us, maybe you've had a hard time training your youngsters to memorize their times tables. Well, I want to introduce you to a program today that I think will help with that. This is Times Tales. It's perfect for small children. At age seven, my youngest son has his multiplication tables memorized, all of them. Times Tales is a series of stories that your child learns in a video. The video presents a simple story that your child can easily recall from memory and assist them in easily remembering the multiplication facts. My late wife, Jamie, made a video talking about how our oldest child still was having problems with times table memorization. Until we tried Times Tales. After months of getting behind and stressful struggling, Times Tales was almost an overnight correction and allowed him to get back on track with his math courses. So I want you to give this a try. They have different packages available, and there's going to be a link in the description below. Every purchase you make from this program is going to help the homestead. Give it a try. It worked for us. I'm sure it can work for you and your child, too. I know my math facts. Hey, hey there. Thanks for watching our channel. If you're looking for great off-grid homesteading videos, this is the channel for you. Hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video you just watched. You can also feel free to send us your questions by going to anamericanhomestead.com on our contact page and send me your question. Your question might get made into a video. In the meantime, check out some of these other great videos. Oh wait, go ahead and click them. Go ahead. <laughs>